Hi everyone! In today's podcast episode, we're going to talk about how to go back to sleep after waking up in the middle of the night. And I'm going to share with you four tips that will help you get back to sleep fast. If you're new here, welcome! I'm Simona, certified life coach and author of the book 111 Ways to Simplify Your Life. I make weekly podcast episodes on personal development, so if that's something that you're interested in, make sure to subscribe. You're probably listening to this episode right after waking up in the middle of the night, and one of the first things you decided to do after tossing and turning for a while was to get on your phone or computer and do a quick Google or YouTube search. Comment below if that's you. Now, as far as going back to sleep after waking up in the middle of the night, there can be many reasons for it. So before we get into the actual tips, we're going to quickly examine what was the main reason for waking up and whether or not that's something that you've been struggling for a while now. The first possible reason for waking up in the middle of the night is having a nightmare. If you haven't listened to episode 29, where I share with you exactly what to do to go back to sleep after having a nightmare, I will link it below so you can listen to it after this one. The second possible reason for waking up is consuming too much caffeine or alcohol before going to bed. Caffeine takes about 6 to 8 hours to get out of your system, so if you've consumed it in the late afternoon, there's a good chance it has a direct influence on you waking up in the middle of the night. As far as alcohol goes, while it can get you a bit drowsy at first, it actually stimulates your nervous system and prevents you from getting a good night's sleep. The third possible reason for waking up in the middle of the night is the temperature in your room. If your bedroom is too hot, your body is not able to relax fully and it's highly likely to wake up throughout the night. I will also mention a few more possible reasons without getting into much detail about any of them. Exercising before going to bed, watching TV or being on your phone late at night and excessive worrying. With that said, let's get into my first tip on how to go back to sleep after waking up in the middle of the night. Don't force yourself to fall asleep. As a person who struggled with all kinds of issues when it comes to sleep, insomnia, anxiety, nightmares, night sweats, I know how hard it can be to go back to sleep after waking up in the middle of the night. It can be especially frustrating if you look at your phone and check the time. Yep, it's 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning and you only have two hours left until your alarm clock beeps. So what do you do then? If you're tossing and turning and have a hard time falling asleep, get out of bed. Forcing yourself to fall asleep will only make it harder. Trust me, I've tried everything. Falling asleep happens only when you let go of your resistance. Now, what can you do once you're out of bed? Try some non-stimulating activities without turning the lights on. If you have a lamp in the living room, turn it on and curl up on the sofa with a good book. What you can also do is a crossword puzzle, draw something, or if your mind is racing, write down your thoughts on a piece of paper. These things may not sound like a lot of fun, especially when you're doing them in the middle of the night, but that's the whole point. We need you to do calming, mundane activities that are going to help you get tired and ready to sleep. Also, pro tip, get yourself a blanket if you get too sleepy and feel like you're not gonna make it to your bed. When you think about it, it's better to sleep on the sofa for a few hours instead of not sleeping at all. My second tip is to focus on your breathing. If you don't want to get out of bed or you've tried all of these activities and none of them worked for you, you can stay in bed and try mindful breathing exercises. You don't need your phone for that. You can do them by yourself. You just need to do the following. Take 10 deep breaths, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Try to focus on your breath while you're doing this exercise. Watch the air go in and out. You can also put your hand on your stomach area to feel it better. If you've done these 10 deep breaths and you're still not sleepy enough, try the box breathing Navy SEAL technique, also known as tactical breathing. This method focuses on slowing the breathing rate down by breathing through the nostrils, counting to 4 for each inhale and then counting to 4 for each exhale. Another technique you can try is feeling every sensation in your body, starting from your toes up to your head. All you need to do is close your eyes, focus all of your attention on your toes, then move up to your legs, 
your knees, your hips, up until you reach the top of your head. There is a good chance you'll be already asleep by the end of it. My next tip is to let your mind wander. Anxiety often happens when we identify with our thoughts. What do I mean by this? When you're stressing out about something, you have this story in your mind that you're constantly repeating to yourself. It usually sounds like a worst-case scenario type of thing. When you expect the worst to happen, you're catastrophizing, which is a concept I've made an entire episode on. If you want to learn more about how to stop catastrophizing, check out episode 107. I will link it below. Now, how can letting your mind wander help when it comes to falling asleep? It's very simple. If you try to suppress your intrusive thoughts and feelings, you're only making them worse. As Carl Jung says, what you resist persists. So instead of resisting all of these anxious thoughts such as When am I going to fall asleep? Here we go again. I'm not going to get back to sleep. Or I'm going to feel groggy in the morning. You can observe them. Step back from them. Look at them objectively from a third-person perspective. You're not your thoughts. You're the silent observer that can decide which ones are helpful and which ones are not. The less you identify with your thoughts, the less power they have over you. If you want to go more in-depth into this topic, download one of my favorite tools that I use with my clients, called the Automatic Thought Record Tool. I often talk about it on this podcast, but if you haven't tried it, I've made a free copy of it. You can download it by clicking the first link in the description box below or visiting bit.ly slash thought record tool. Tip number four is to activate your parasympathetic system. Before you click off this episode, trust me, this tip is probably going to give you the best long-term results. So listen to what I'm about to say. There are two systems that operate in your body, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system prepares your body for fight or flight response during any potential danger. When you're tossing and turning at night, your body is often responding to a non-existent threat. In this case, the anxiety that you're feeling is caused by your racing thoughts. The parasympathetic nervous system does exactly the opposite. It restores the body to a calm and composed state. The question is, how can you activate your parasympathetic system fast? Well, we've already mentioned the first way, deep breathing. So what else can you do? You can notice which parts of your body are tense and deliberately let them loose. For example, if you notice that your shoulders feel tense, make sure to slouch them and feel like your body is sinking into the bed. Another way to activate your parasympathetic system is to gently press your lips together. Your lips have parasympathetic fibers spread throughout them, so touching them activates the parasympathetic nervous system. Another way to activate your parasympathetic nervous system is to visualize your favorite place. Think of a time you were really happy. Immerse yourself into the memory and try to make it as vivid as possible. Now, I know a lot of us are dealing with an enormous amount of anxiety right now, So if you have difficulty sleeping due to fear of death, listen to episode 61 next, where I will walk you through what you can do to tone down your death anxiety. Thank you so much for listening. If you found this episode helpful, please like it. And subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss out on my weekly podcast episodes. I'm sending you all my love, and I'll talk to you in the next one.